Welcome back to Deck Building with Bahamut. Today, we're going to be trying something a little bit different. This time, we're not revolving around a triggered ability or something like that. We're going to be revolving around a type. Uh, this deck can also be implemented as a pure, so a monocolored deck, so black, or you can split it and make it black and green depending on what you uh, what you want to get out of it. So we're going to be having a look at zombies. No way that's overused at all, but anyway. So obviously we're going to start in black. And let's have a look. Now to start us off, one of our best wallers for a little cost is Rancid Rats. Uh, it's a 1-1, one, one. it costs 2 mana, that's no good, and then you look at Death Touch. And it's a zombie as well, so a lot of uh, triggers that we're going to be using with the, this deck will uh, activate as a result of it. So it's a lot more useful than it first appears. So we're going to chuck all four of those in there. Now combination of this deck is going to be a lot about killing your op your opponent's creatures very quickly. So, as you can see from the Rancid Rats from just before, we have Death Touch. So we're going to be combining it with the cheap uh, removal spell, Reeve Soul, so that you can get rid of some creatures quite quickly. Of course, we might adjust these numbers a little bit later, but I'm just going for the initial values. And now, one of the cheap chief benefactors of our deck is Diagraph Colossus. So 2-2 two, two, uh, for 3 mana so is, is okay. But then you look at his abilities and you can see why he's, he forms part of the core of this deck. So if you've, if you've been forced to lose a lot of creatures during the fight, he'll come in as a powerful stompy kill creature. But if you get him early, then he starts generating your zombie army by using his secondary ability. So both abilities are extremely useful just depending on the situation you're in. So Chuck definitely put both of those in there. Now, while at first glance he may not look like he initially gels with this deck very well, um he does provide another source of uh, zombie tokens. So, Kalitas, the Necromancer, uh, definitely can flip a situation on his head, especially combined with our large amount of kill spells and killing abilities. So, you can whittle away your opponent's army while strengthening your own. Plus, in certain situations, his sacrifice, so his triggered ability, can be quite useful as well because uh, it works on if you sacrifice a zombie, and of course our army is made up of zombies, so he can suddenly go from a 3-4 to whatever you want as long as you have the mana for it and the tokens to sacrifice. And with the kill spells in this deck, you certainly will. So definitely put him in as he is surprisingly handy. Another one of the key focuses of this deck is quick destroy abilities. So, while you won't be able to really work too much against a hexproof deck um, without adding in an enchantment or two, for the majority of decks, this will basically be your, your air removal and your regular creature removal, Fleshbag Marauder. So you can see he's a 3-1 for 3 mana, but the main purpose of him is, whenever he comes into play, you, uh, you sacrifice a creature and your opponent does the same. But with our deck, we're also bringing back our zombies quite often. So you can think of it as a one-two punch. So just playing him and then removing himself can buff up your uh, Colossus. But you can also use your uh, revival abilities, which there are several in this deck, to bring him back and make your opponent sacrifice another creature. And then do the same again, just over and over and over again until 
there isn't really much of an opponent's side left, and then you can basically just overwhelm the shattered remnants of their army. Now, there are ways to counter this, uh, mostly exile, but often exile decks are, are slower, so often you can get set up to the point where it doesn't matter that they've started exiling some of your creatures and cards. But, of course, it all depends on the play of the cards as well, so. So definitely put all three of those in there. And moving on. Continuing on with our zombies, we have Undead Servant. Now, four mana for a 3-2 isn't spectacular, but looking at his uh, ability there, you can see it gets gradually more powerful as the game goes on. And of course, the 3-2 itself is, is quite handy, especially when you can allow it to die and not care because it's powering up its own any future ones that you draw. Uh, plus, uh, it, it can also uh, be triggered in combination with your revive abilities. So, while the cost is quite expensive for a 3-2, it's think of it as an investment in the future of the, the game. So, well, you may be paying a little bit more for now. If you draw another one, you're getting a free token. And then you draw another one, you're getting two free tokens and so until you get all four out. So, it is uh, a build-up card, if you think of it that way. And, of course, make sure you put all four of those in, because the more, the more there are, the more effective its ability is. Now, another of the key abilities, or key spells, I should say, is Cruel Revival. Because our deck revolves around zombies, uh, we're, of course, going to include this spell. Uh, so it can kill anything that's non-zombie, uh, that, that doesn't have hexproof, of course, or, in or indestructible. But keep in mind that it also can't be regenerated, so creatures that regenerate can't save themselves from this. So there's an upside and a downside to this spell, but the main benefit of it, besides the removal of a creature, is the fact that you can pick a zombie card from your graveyard to return to your hand. And the majority of the time, you're going to want to return the flesh bag, uh, the 3 1, that when it comes into play, you sacrifice a creature and your opponent sacrifices a creature. So once again, it's another double up effect. So put all three of those in your deck. Now, depending on how you want to tilt this deck, so especially if you're going to go pure mono, so pure black, you'll want to have both of these Ever After cards in there because they allow you to constantly return creatures. So you can essentially just kamikaze the enemy nearly non-stop with your creatures to keep their forces weak. Uh... And of course, it also allows you to, to bring back two Fleshbag Marauders in one turn, or other little nasty tricks like that, especially um, your Death Touch Rats. Though well, they may seem pretty weak, they can kill anything that, that uh, doesn't have First Strike, or doesn't have any way of preventing the damage dealt to it. So, no matter the size of your opponent's creature, it's still going to die, unless it has some way of protecting itself. But because we're using a dual color deck, uh, I'd advise only having one in here. Plus, it also protects you from draw, sorry, from running out of cards uh, because it constantly returns to your deck. So essentially, if you ever do get uh, to the point where the, you only have one card remaining, you're going to be drawing ever after every turn, <laughs> meaning your your army basically is infinite provided they cannot get rid of ever after from your library now to keep the deck fast and to give some quick frontline power uh... we can chuck in a few shambling ghouls for two mana a two three is pretty good the only downside of it, of course is that it enters the battlefield tapped and that also counts whenever it's brought from the graveyard into play but He's still pretty good overall, and of course there's another zombie we can add to our force's strength. Okay, so we've got a pretty good black base setup, and of course you can flesh this out, 
black the black side out if you're going to go a pure mono, pure black side. Uh, with some more kill spells or um, extra revival abilities. But in a for this deck, uh, we're going to go dual color. So uh, keep in mind, you can also include Bonds of Mortality if Hexproof is a problem, uh, or if you expect it to be a problem. Plus, you get to draw a card as well. So it's quite a handy thing to have, but situational. Now, in our case, one of the key things is going to be keeping the amount of cards up to your deck. So to do this, we have Elemental Bond, which allows you, whenever a creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield, you get to draw a free card. So, as you can see, basically um, everything, including Diagraph Colossus if there's a creature in your graveyard. Everything from this point on in the deck uh, has power 3 or greater, including our Fleshbag Marauder, which we're going to be bringing back constantly. So, it actually does speed up the deck quite a lot. Now, we also want more revival abilities, but one of the best things about green is the fact that we can gain life while we're reviving our creatures which makes it a real dick move for your opponent <laughs> because they they whittle you down a bit and then you get your creature back and you get life how to be a dick 101 so uh, definitely put a couple of pulses of mur muraza uh, of course you can adjust the number or the value depending on your own preferences so you can put all four in if you really wanted to and just constantly be gaining life but the choice is yours. Uh, Wild Size is another handy card to have, although I'd probably keep it to two, because uh, you will get a lot of tokens in this deck, but its main purpose is drawing a card or for situational defense and attack. So often if you're forced to defend with a weaker creature, it's a, a good way of uh, getting rid of an opponent's creature. But, uh, same with attacking, because you gain trample as well. But the main advantage, generally, is just to draw an extra card, which can give you an extra land or whatever you need. And finally, our multi-type for this deck, Baloth Null. 4-5, 6 mana, it's fairly average. But then you look at his ability, and it all comes together. So you can see brings two target creature cards from your graveyard back to your hand and of course they can be fleshbag marauder or whatever uh, or the rats with their death touch whatever you want so essentially you're constantly just bringing back creature cards from your graveyard so they can never really kill any of your creatures off permanently unless they exile them which makes it ridiculously hard to to clear your side of the field for your opponent which uh, makes decks that don't focus on flying or uh, unblockable abilities to get through. So the, your main problem overall with this deck, uh, as in this base form, is going to be flyers. So definitely keep that in mind because there are some ways to counter that you can include cards like plummet if you want to specifically target flyers or you can include enchantments uh, the enchantment from black to created by blood which gives any of your creatures flying uh, and of course you can regenerate it because you have a lot of zombie tokens so you can basically keep your flyers vulnerable nearly as long as you've got the required creatures to sacrifice. And of course, since we're using a purely or almost exclusively zombie uh, creatures, especially since we're generating zombie tokens in large quantities as well, Stoneforge Masterwork is of course essential to this. So, chuck another couple of those in there, and our deck is pretty much complete. 
so we can add our lands and we're going to have a little bit more lands than usual just uh, to make sure we get the cards we need also make sure that you tilt your also make sure that you tilt your lands slightly towards black ah and another thing another way of getting cards back with this deck more tree mire make sure you chuck all four of those in there because they allow you to take a creature card from your graveyard put it on top of your library doing that with the rats can really piss an opponent off um, I would advise against using all four fertile thickets although you can chuck a couple in uh, as, as their search function can be useful but if you put all four in, you reduce the number of basic land cards that you could potentially find. So with this deck, I'd try and keep it uh, down to two. A couple of rogues passages just to stop stalemates. And of course, if you're worried about flyers, you can uh, put in a couple of foundry of consoles. Uh, you can swap out the rogues passages for them or fertile thicket, of course. Now we need our multi lands. And we'll finish it off with our uh, regular lands. And of course, you could put in your uh, land creature cards as well. Uh, if you want to add more death touch to the deck, uh, you can also b bring those back with Pulsed Marasa if they get killed off. So they are potentially quite useful to you. Okay, so everything's together now. As you can see, we're heavily tilted towards black, but we have our occasional uh, green uh, card to help us along, especially in card generation. Uh, you can also tweak that the breakdown yourself to make them equal or to tilt it more one way or another it's up to you and depends on what effect you want to come out of your deck as you can see our slope uh, rises up so we have majority of uh, two or three cards to keep our speed quite high uh, but we do have our powerful end game spells and abilities uh, in there as well so there's there's uh, a few end game capabilities there especially when you've built up a decent number of zombies Okay, and that's our deck done with. Time to check our star value and then put it to the test. Okay, so you can see here it's a little bit slower than our usual uh, initial value, which is two and a half stars, but it's one of the... the um, Think of it as slow burn deck. So while your initial turns may not be that powerful, uh, it's very hard for your opponent to actually stop you from building up your forces and eventually just becoming a tidal wave to wipe them out with an army of zombies. Which is sort of generally how zombies work. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty simple overall. Uh, Strength-wise, yep, yeah, I'd say that's fairly accurate. You don't have really big, tough, stompy creatures like big solo creatures that are massive but what you do have is armor that can make any one of your zombies massive if you've got enough of them in play uh, control is quite high and is that's your one of your best counters against flyers or unblockables is the fact that you can just spell down or make them sacrifice nearly anything that they put into play unless it has hexproof in which case you chuck in a couple of those enchantments that allow you to remove hexproof uh, now, despite what Synergy says, as you can see, it's only got one star there, the cards in the deck actually do have quite a lot of Synergy, it's just not direct, it, which is the way that it rates Synergy, basically, uh, here. So, uh, because Synergy is represented by amount of cards with the same ab abilities. So, uh, in our case... They don't have the same abilities, but they're all zombies, and often they have complementary abilities that will help each other. So, uh, as you'll see from our test session, which we're about to start. Uh, 
and it's time to unleash the fury of the zombie horde. <clears throat> okay, uh, unfortunately we haven't got any creatures in our initial draw, so we'll try again. Hmm, still very heavy on the end game content, so uh, I'll risk it. Okay, so we'll get rid of Fertile Thicket early. And hope we can draw some cheaper cards. But it is nice to have uh, Kalitas very early. Okay, we can hope for another swamp. Nope. Still no swamps, except for the one we just drew. So, we'll keep waiting. Okay, there we go. There's our first creature, shambling as uh, zombie thingy. <laughs> shambling ghoul, yeah, of course. So, we'll have that as our initial defender. Well, figuratively speaking. Seeing as a 2 3 death touch just came into play. But we'll see how things go. Ah, there we go. So, we can play our Necromancer quite early, uh, and we can also combine that with our Cruel Revival abilities <coughs> shortly. So if the 2-3 does attack, I would block it with the 2-3, with my 2-3, uh, because I could use Cruel Revival to uh, get my Shambling Ghoul back. But they didn't, so... That's all good as well. Now, I could play Cruel cool Revival here, but uh, since it's an instant, I can actually hold off on using it. So, I might do that, just in case something more dangerous comes into play. And same with our Baloth Nulls. As you can see, the nasty effect of Cruel Revival is uh, if I did have something in the graveyard, uh, I could kill off a 2-3, uh, gain a 2-2 zombie token from my Necromancer, and gain a, cre a zombie back from my graveyard, all in one spell. So you can see the effectiveness of it in this particular deck. But at the moment, I'm really waiting for them to play anything that's actually a big threat, so... Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Now, in a normal deck, there is no way that you would want to block with the 3-4 here. But, since our deck is all about bringing cards back, that's fine with me. Now, keep in mind that our Necromancer isn't a zombie, so we won't be able to use Cruel Revival to bring him back. So, we'll either need to use Baleth Null or Mortary Mire to return him to our hand. And in this case, the most effective way of doing it is using Mortary Mire. So you can see that they're building up a quite sizable force. Now, even though it's a bit of a waste, I want to use Cruel Revival just to get rid of the flyer. So they can't fly over my head. Uh, 
Okay, now we've got our necromancer back. Which is good for us. And of course, if any of our creatures get killed off, we can bring them back with Baloth Null. And have a 4-5 on the field as well at the same time, so it's a win-win for us. Okay, looks like they're attacking all out. So, definitely want to get rid of that 2-3. Quite willing to sacrifice that. And there we go. Okay. Of course, they trigger that, which means that I trigger this to keep my Necromancer alive. Plus, we also gain some life out of it as well. Now, now that they've played their little tricks, Time to get some payback. Okay, so as you can see, our position suddenly swung around quite um, abruptly. And you can see that we now have the dominant uh, army, even though they have more creatures. And of course, even with their death touch abilities, that's not really a stumbling block for us. And of course, we can attack with our Bailoth. Uh, sorry, yeah, Bailoth Null to keep uh, thinning their army out. Okay. So, we'll get rid of one of them, I think. Okay. I know, once again, they've killed off our creatures. But, once again, it doesn't really matter, because we can just bring them back. So you can continually use that Bailoth trick to just keep swapping creatures around. Like the more they kill you off, the d white decks when they're full of reprisals, all of that doesn't matter. You can deal with it. It's fine. And of course, if you're low on health, you'll have Pulse Marasa to get you that nice little chunk of HP back. So here we go. And we've got our Necromancer back out again for the second time. Now... Let's have a look. We can attack with our Bailoth again. And they'll probably multi block again, which is fine with us. Now we'll get rid of those slaughter drones this time. And that gives us another couple of creatures. And oops, we got our Bailoth Null back. Ah, oh, they just can't get rid of it, can they? And we've gained some more life out of it, out of the exchange as well. As you can see, it's just a constant flip, whittle, flip, whittle. That's the strategy here. And once again, we've got another fly to deal with. So what I'm going to do is attack all out. And when they block, sacrifice. And kill off their fly just for lulls. Well, that's not, of course, the most effective way of doing things. It does. It is a way of uh, grinding them into the dirt. But you can pretty much see all we've managed to achieve with uh, a whole uh, four creatures we've drawn. Yeah, four creatures we've drawn in this whole fight. 
so keep that in mind that you don't actually need a large army to win with this deck because your army generates itself. And I think we're pretty much on the brink of winning it here. But the main point of this deck is that it's like a tidal wave. Uh, you start off small, you start off relatively slowly, but as the battle goes on, your side will just build and build and build, sucking away your opponent's strength as you go, uh, until you just become a massive wave that they can't stop. So let's finish things off. Even though we won't be able to pull anything from the graveyard, it doesn't really matter. And we'll finish off our opponent, but that gives you a general idea. We didn't get our um, Colossuses, which are great generators, like Necromancer. Um, and having one of those, or two of those on the field, can really improve the um, speed at which your army generates. But, at least it gives you a taste of what this deck is capable of. Especially since... With all those kill spells and fleshbag marauders and other things, it's really difficult for your opponent to keep creatures on the field, which is how you basically you keep them off balance while you build up your own forces. So that's essentially how the strategy of the deck works. Uh, ho hopefully the zombies haven't eaten all your brains and you're still around to stick around for the next episode of Deck Building with Bahamut. And I think that's it for today, so see you next time.